Hiya, I'm Hannah and I'm going to talk to you today about medicine. Tanya's asked me to do the video um, and she sent me over some of your questions so I'll try and answer some of them. A bit about me to start, so I'm a GP in Slammerwechen. I grew up in Anglesey. I went to David Hughes School for my GCs and my A-levels and I went to medical school in Leicester. I um, first started thinking about being a doctor, probably after getting my GCSEs. Um, I'd kind of thought about a whole host of different jobs before that and then when I got my GC results I did better than I expected um, with one C, two Bs, five A's and three A stars and I thought oh maybe I could be a doctor with these grades and it was at that point that I thought um, you know I'm going to try and apply for medicine. I didn't know anybody um, who was a doctor personally, certainly nobody in my family so I was a little bit naive in applying. I um, kind of threw myself into my A levels and was predicted three A's and a B. I got lots of work experience locally with adults with learning disabilities and in the WRVS cafe and also started work as a support worker. Um, so I applied in the second year of my A-levels with my predicted grades and with that work experience and also having been to um, the Spitigrino for a week work experience and also to the MedLink. Um, I applied for four different medical schools but unfortunately wasn't accepted to any of them so I finished my A-levels with my um, three A's and a B and started working as a healthcare assistant in a local care home. Um, and I went back to my careers advisor who suggested that I try again to apply. So I did and fortunately that time I was accepted to Leicester Medical School. So I started Leicester in 2009 and I qualified as a doctor in 2014. Um, after qualifying I moved back up to North Wales to do my foundation years. So those are your um, F1 and F2 jobs that um, nearly everybody coming out of medical school does. And it's when you rotate around different jobs. Um, before you decide on what speciality you want to do. Um, I did those in Wrexham and in Bangor and then in 2016 after doing my F2 I started GP training and that was three years locally and I qualified as a GP last year and I've been working as a salary GP in Flamerbechen since. Um, I think I chose medicine because I knew it was going to be quite, um, quite a challenge and also I knew that it would be a really interesting job and it's quite well paid. Um, one of the questions was about whether or not I regret being a doctor and I can say absolutely not. I, I love the job. There are obviously pros and cons, um, so I'll talk a little bit about them, but I, I definitely have no regrets at all. Um, the benefits of being a doctor is that um, it's a really, really interesting job. You work with lots of interesting people, you get to meet lots of, lots of interesting patients, there's um, lots and lots of learning involved, you're always kind of thinking and challenging yourself and learning lots of things. Um, there's loads and loads of different job opportunities as well, so whatever your personality, there's a job that would suit you. You don't have to be a people's person or be particularly good at communication or anything really. You could, you could be a doctor that works in hospital, you could be a surgeon, you could be a GP or work with children, or you could you know, be a doctor that helps people at the end of life as a palliative care doctor. Um, if you're not really particularly into people, you could be um, a radiologist, so that's a doctor who looks at scans and x-rays and interprets them. Or you could be somebody who looks at tissue samples under the microscope and works out what diseases are going on there. So, um, so when you qualify and you adopt a whole host of different job opportunities. You can also get involved in other stuff, so things like teaching. There's lots and lots of teaching as a, as a doctor. You're um, usually teaching junior doctors on the wards or medical students at a place with you. Um, and you can go down the route of getting qualifications for that, so you can get like a diploma in medical education. You can work with um, local universities. Um, you can also do research, um, you know, try and get lots of things published, um, or you can work in the private sector as well and do lots of private work. Um, it's a job that's well respected, it's a job that's recognised around the world, so you've, you've got loads of opportunities as well to work abroad if you want to, and lots of people choose to do stints in New Zealand or Australia. Um, some people go and work in um, less developed countries, um, and there's lots of organisations like the Medicine Sans Frontier, that, um, that would enable you to go and do placements in, in countries in Africa, for example. Or you can be a little bit more adventurous in, and try for, for work in things like um, in the Antarctica with the British Antarctic Society group. Um, it's a very well paid job, so I'm fortunate that it's well paid enough that I can I can work just three days a week. And obviously with, with good salary and um, you know, working part time, there's lots of other opportunities as well. So you've got money for, for holidays or for pursuing other ho um, hobbies. So, for example, I um I took up sailing last year and bought a boat. So you know, it's something that having a good job um, and having a good good salary kind of enables you to do. 
the the cons of um, of medicine is that it takes a lot of work. There's lots and lots of studying involved. It's a you know usually five years in medical school with lots of exams, and you spend lots of holidays and birthdays and Christmas kind of with your head stuck in a book. Um, when you qualify as a doctor, the kind of learning still kind of carries on because you've normally got exams to get into specialities and exams then when you finish your specialty training um, and then you're expected to keep your learning up to date so you know forever going on courses or keeping up with like online um, online learning or webinars um, so yeah constant constant studying the um, the other downside to medicine is that when you're looking at jobs um, sometimes you can be expected to move around quite a bit so when you come out of medical school um, everybody's ranked together across the whole country, um, you know, including Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and England. And you can state your preference for where you want to be, but your um, the job you get is going to be dependent on where you are compared to other people. So, for example, if you're wanting to work in London, um, but, you know, you maybe didn't score too highly against everyone else, there's a good chance maybe you won't get that job. And then you could be placed, you know, somewhere in Scotland where, you know, you might not necessarily ne um, want to be. Um, so that's your downside as well and when you're in training as well you're expected to move around quite a bit as well so within the Wales deanery for the trainees in Wales if you're working in hospital you might be um, you know spending a year in in Bangor but then the year after that being up at with or or Cardiff or Swansea so um, it can be um, quite difficult if you're um, you know hoping to settle down have kids get a house and um, that's the other, other thing to consider um, the, um, some specialities are quite competitive as well, so for example if you wanted to go into something like surgery you're also expected to have lots of other qualifications or lots of research papers published and that can be really time consuming and can get quite expensive as well. Um, I chose GP because um, I really liked working with people over a long period of time. I liked kind of following up the same patient and getting to know the background, getting to know the family. Um, and um, and also just the, the variety of stuff that comes through. So I would normally see 28 patients face to face in clinic in, in my day um, and they can come in with absolutely anything. So sometimes you get lots of the usual stuff where they come in with infections, coughs, colds. Sometimes they come in with mental health problems. Sometimes they come in with, with relationship problems or problems in work, um, a whole host of things. So I really like the variety and the fact that you don't know what's gonna come, come in. Um, the um, one of the questions was about choosing the university, depending on what kind of job you would want. Um, my feeling is that probably the university you go to doesn't really um, weigh too too much in terms of um, you know the training applications. When you come out of medical school, you're ranked against everybody else, and you don't get any extra points for going to a Russell Group or going to Oxford or Cambridge. You know, if you come out of Leicester with you know a really good score in the in the first decile, you're going to have a better chance of getting a good job um, or getting your, your favourite job as opposed to somebody coming from Oxford, Cambridge in the fifth decile because you're ranked with them regardless of what university you went to. And then when you're choosing your speciality um, jobs, um, again, I don't think anybody asks what university you go to and you say you don't get any extra points for it as well. So much more is, you know, um, what additional qualifications, qualifications you've done, what how you form in your... Um, your speciality exams, those kind of things. So I don't think the university you go to really weigh at all um, on your chances of getting into speciality training. Um, in terms of advice, I would say if if you're um, keen to do medicine, um, definitely go for it. It is an absolutely amazing job, loads and loads of opportunities. Um, I don't think you'll regret it. Um, speak to like careers rails or careers advisors. Look for kind of um, opportunities locally that, um, that you can get involved in that will help with your CV. So things like volunteer work um, and certainly within the care sector there's usually lots of opportunities so in, in care homes it might be just going in for an afternoon to help with the activities or um, or like I did with like local groups with learning disabilities and um, or you know the WRVS is always looking for volunteers so those kind of opportunities I think show that you know you're, um, you're kind of committed and um, ready to work hard. I think be prepared to, to have to put a lot of work in with work. Um, you know, certainly with um, A levels, it's quite a step up from GCSEs. I think so. Um, so you just have to be really disciplined in 
in studying and getting the grades. Um, definitely speak around, um, you know, to people who you know in, in medicine. And um, when it comes to applications, you know, get some get people to have a look at your personal statement, prepare for the interviews. Um, when I did the medical school interviews, it was still the kind of traditional across the table, two or three doctors in front. But I think now they um, have much more kind of um, little mini stations with questions in each. So I think it takes a bit of preparation and there's lots of books and lots of online resources that you could try. Or um, when I was applying for medical school, I just spoke to one of the local GPs who gave me lots of advice and... Um, and you might be able to find somebody, you know, who also chat to you face to face. Um, if you do have any other questions or, or um, you know, or you want me to, to, to have a look at your CV or do some any interview preps, then just get in touch and, and Tanya has my email. Um, but yeah, if any other questions, just let me know. Thank you.